Well, folks, we got to talk about this. Donald Trump was on Fox and Friends this morning. And it just lends credence to my theory that the only people that are voting for Donald Trump are the ones that really don't listen to him. Because when you hear some of this stuff, I got to tell you, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So he kicked it off with this. So he was trying to say, like he always does, that he could have done better than Abraham Lincoln with the Civil War. Have a listen to this. There's uh, great presidents. Well, Lincoln was probably a great president, although I've always said, why wasn't that settled? You know, I'm a guy that it doesn't make sense. We had a civil war. Well, half the country uh, left before he got there. Yeah, yeah. But you'd almost say, like, why wasn't that? As an example, Ukraine would have never happened in Russia if I were president. Oh, yeah, yeah. The whole the whole litany of things, you know, the Depression wouldn't have happened, right? If Donald Trump was president, World War One wouldn't have happened. World War II, nothing bad would have happened. Nobody would have run out of toilet paper either. You know, it just gets, it just gets tiring. Um, Abraham Lincoln, here we are. I mean, that, that was an incredible situation that, that he had to solve. Of course, Donald Trump, you know, can you imagine? I mean, just can you imagine Donald Trump in Abraham Lincoln's shoes? I mean, what he would have done. I mean, first, there would have been no comb over. There would have been no bronzer. I mean, it. I mean, he would have been uh, fighting with a, a hand behind his back. <laughs> but it would have been a mess. You know, just on and on, folks. I mean, but that, that takes the cake, doesn't it? And then he went on about this. So he's talking about liberal cities, and he's basically telling everybody that if they don't play by his rules, they're not going to get any federal money. Who does this? I mean, we've got laws, we've got, it's America, right? This is not a banana republic, Donald Trump. But here's what he said. This is a quick one. Right. No, if they want to get cute, then you don't send them the money. Tell me about that. Yeah, if they, if they want to get cute, then you don't send them the money. Uh, like I said, the only people that are not voting for Trump are the ones that really listen to what he has to say. Okay, the, the rest of the people that are voting for Trump evidently have not heard what he's had to say. And then, folks, this this does not make a lot of sense to me, but I'm going to play it for you. So Donald Trump is looking for, obviously, a little bit of help in, in the campaign, wherever he can get it. Right? I mean, funny as I say this, his son is out, you know, hunting somewhere. I mean, how did that, what's going on there? Why is his son out hunting? Is he not relevant to the campaign? But Nikki Haley is relevant to his campaign and she has offered to help Donald Trump, but Donald Trump says he'll do what he has to do, but not without slamming her first. So how does that work? Nikki Haley, you want her to come in and help you, but you're slamming her at the same time. Here it is. Likes Nikki Haley, and they are reluctant to jump into your column. She wants to help. She said, if he calls me, I'm there. You, she, you guys used to be tight. In the last 18 days, will you call her and say, come out yeah, with me? Yeah, I'll do what I have to do. But let, let me just tell you, Nikki Haley and I fought, and I beat her by 50, 60, 90 points. I beat her in her own state yeah. by numbers that nobody's ever been beaten by. I beat Nikki badly. I beat everyone else too bad. Do, do we need to go through this? I mean, is this relevant to the fact that Nikki wants to help you? I mean, how? How? How is beating her badly relevant to her trying to help you? I, I'm, I'm lost in this thread of conversation with Donald Trump. I, I, evidently, Nikki Haley probably should not listen to that, that clip if she really is planning on helping Trump. I mean, she should not listen to that clip. Um, folks, it's it's insane stuff out there, but that's how it kicked off today. Um, insanity as it is. I've got something else that I want to play for you here. Um, hang on for just one second. I'm going to cue this up. Remember those watches that Donald Trump was selling for $100,000? Well, there's an article on the company behind that. And let's just say that they're not coming from Worth Avenue. So evidently CNN did this article, and I've got it for you here. It's otherwise something that you have to subscribe to to see it. 
but I felt it was relevant to the insanity of Donald Trump. So the article is entitled, CNN tried to find the makers of Trump's new Swiss-made watches, quote-unquote. We ended up at a shopping center in Wyoming, Wearing his signature blue suit and red tie, Donald Trump appears presidential as he sits behind a dark wood desk and signs an official-looking document. Just then, a glimmer of gold sparkle swirls around his wrist, the article says. The special effect is intended to call attention to the purpose of the former president's appearance in the brief promotional video. He's selling watches. Oh, yeah. And not just any watch. These limited edition timepieces are designed for the president and bear the Trump name. A website boasts of the brand Swiss made power and precision. And you know the BS is coming when you hear that kind of stuff, don't you? In one model has a six figure price tag, but a CNN investigation into the manufacturing and distribution of the Trump branded timepiece is dead ended at an innocuous looking shopping center in a small city in remote Northern Wyoming, not far from the border of Montana. Doesn't sound exactly like they're coming from Worth Avenue. There, sharing a parking lot with a hodgepodge of businesses, including an H&R Block, a Wendy's fast food restaurant, and a vape and hemp smoke shop, of course, is a nondescript office space that serves as the mailing address for the best watches on earth, LLC. The company behind the new line of Trump watches. The building houses a daycare, but there is no sign of the watches, Trump says. And Trump says, by way of kind of pushing this, that it puts you in a very exclusive club, you know, wearing his watch. So they go on to say here that little is known or discoverable about the company now working with the Republican nominee for president, including the person or persons behind it. The lack of public details about Trump's new business partner are a feature of where and how the limited liability corporation was created. Um, these watches are the result of an opaque arrangement prompting questions his campaign hasn't answered and which couldn't be resolved even by knocking on the door of the business's business address. So, you know, what, what are you doing here, Trump? You're in the middle of a campaign, right? And later on today, I, I really have the feeling that he is, Trump is incensed by the fact that he's not getting all the media attention. He's, he's incensed that he's having to split the media attention with Kamala Harris right now because he wants it all. He wants it all. So you're, you're in the middle of this, you know, you're pouting because Kamala's, you know, in the limelight and you're not getting all the attention. But yet at the same time, you're trying to sell watches for $100,000 with a nondescript address in Wyoming. I mean, I think we need to scratch the gold on these things and see how, how long it takes it to come off. You know, how how long would it take if you just kind of nicked it or scratched it? Maybe the, the whole thing would peel off, you know. Oh, look, look, it's a shell of the thinnest gold veneer on my $100,000 watch. Who in the hell? I mean, so it, it's just a, it's a whole potpourri of weird stuff going on here, folks. And and lastly, I got to play this for you. So this is a clip from Mar-a-Lago. They had a little shindig there and the video is real and the audio is real, but I think they pulled out certain channels in the audio so that you could hear the guy singing a little bit better, which is scary. And they pulled out some of the drums. So the audio is original, but I think they've kind of accentuated different aspects of it. But I think if you heard the the real deal, which I don't think this, this piece is the real deal in terms of all of the accompaniment, you know, shall I say instrumentation, so they've picked out channels of the real deal and it it had to have been something to hear anyway if if you got the full audio of of every instrument i mean what we're hearing here folks is absolutely insane so this is mar-a-lago have a listen let's get into a party frame of mind let's have a little music give us back sense. our american dream Oh I can gosh. see it slipping away. A golden evening for a golden president. They ignore president. our constitution in our face every day. I can <laughs> see our grandchildren, all the sadness in their eyes. <laughs> We're not taking it 
anymore. We're tired of all of their lies. We're gonna make America great again. We're gonna take her Here's back Ronnie Johnson today. out there giving the salute. We're gonna wave the flag of victory. MTG Marjorie We're Taylor. We're gonna make America great. Lindell, Mike Lindell, Don Jr. They're just praying for this at home. Here's Trump walking through the We're going to wave the flag of victory. We're going to make America great. We're going to make America great again. We're going to take her back today. We're going to wave the flag Trump's doing a little YMCA thing on the stage. This is insane. Oh, my gosh. Folks, you just can't make this stuff up. Okay, it, it got a little weird at the end there, a little funny, but um, Mar-a-Lago, it's the place to be, folks. It, it's, it's all that and more. Till next time.